Thank you, Lord. Can you feel the presence of God in this place? Yes, sir. There's a particular miracle that I think goes unnoticed that happens so regularly. God communicates with us. The way he communicates with us is a miracle. How many of you are ready for God to communicate with you? Amen. The amazing thing to me about how God talks with us is that his, his primary method of communicating with us is not words. You ever just felt his presence and understood everything was going to be okay? Yes, sir. Yes, yes. Thank you, God. Faith in your arms, both God. Hallelujah. Because I think that, you know, a lot of times our, our human nature is to try to just find a way forward, you know. Um, sometimes the victory is just surviving another day or another moment or through another night, you know. I think that sometimes um, we, 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 take, we take so much uh, gratitude and just being here. And I think that sometimes we, we, we are looking for the path of least resistance because that's human nature. Um, but, but how many of you know that, that uh, oftentimes uh, God, that isn't part of his agenda, the path of least resistance. Sometimes you have to uh, deal with the struggles um, and struggles is what God uses to make us stronger. Amen. And I'm going to tell you, I personally have uh, prayed for ways to, to get stronger without it. <laughs> Come on. Can I just keep it real? Yes, sir. I, 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 I personally, you know, have, have uh, talked to, to people about that, 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 that have uh, obtained and, and, and endured so much and, and, and I admire them but I don't necessarily want to go through that. Come on. Some of y'all have been through some things that, that you know <laughs> you know we, we, we can we can pray for you and that kind of thing and, and identify with you, you know your pain but you know we if, if it's at all possible we don't want to necessarily uh, do that, but you have a mountain to climb. It's, it's, it's your mountain. Can't nobody climb it for you, and there just ain't no other way to get to where you're supposed to go mm -hmm. by living through somebody else's testimony. And as much as, you know, um, I used to be a little embarrassed because, you know, I used to try to find, you know, another route. Scriptures like the one that I'm sharing today put me in really good company. Because I'm in Matthew 26. And I'm starting with the 36th verse. When we have what the Bible says where Jesus came to the place called Gethsemane. And the Bible says that he said to his disciples, I want you to sit right here while I go over there and pray. Hmm. Mm -hmm. So he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and he began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Then saith he unto them, he said, My soul is exceeding sorrowful, even unto death. Tarry ye here and watch with me. 
The Bible says he went a little further and fell on his face and he prayed. And this is where I found myself in good company. This is the son of the Almighty <coughs> God praying to his father. And he says, oh, my father. Come on. <laughs> if it be possible, <coughs> let this cup pass from me. Amen. Nevertheless, not as I will. Mm -hmm. but as thou will. You understand that that verse describes two different wills? That's right. We got Jesus praying and clarifying there's a difference between his will and God's will. He, he clarified that if there's a way to let this cup pass from me, then, then do it. But, but I want your will to be done. Mm -hmm. And if you fast forward, we understand that God's will was for him to go to the cross. That's right. He was looking for another way, but based on what happened, there clearly wasn't another way. I want you to pray with me from the thought, ain't no other way. Amen. Tell your neighbor, say, ain't no other way. Amen. Father, I thank you for yet another opportunity to come into your house, sit at your feet, and hear your word. The grass withereth and the flower fadeth, but only your word shall stand forever. Mm -hmm. Father, because it's preaching time now, we're asking you now, as always, that you would continue to hide me behind the cross. We pray this now. As always, because we understand that in order for this to happen, Father, I must decrease and you must increase. So that when the people look at me, they will continue to see you. Though the people would listen to me, we would all hear from you. Because we never want the focus to be on the messenger, but the message. We never want the focus to be on the man, but the Messiah. So that when all is said and done, only Jesus will be glorified in this house. And your anointing will continue to fall in this place like rain. And all who agree said, Amen. 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 You know, we were talking about the way God communicates and how it amazes me how God, how God just kind of skips over our, our, our archaic method of communicating with just words, but rather he has a way of just bypassing our language. How many of you know God's primary language ain't English? <laughs> His, his primary uh, method of communication. It ain't even Greek or Hebrew for you yeah. theologians out there. Hmm. He doesn't even have to waste his time with words. He bypasses our language and our intellect and he speaks directly to our understanding. Hmm. It, 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 it's like suddenly a, a light bulb comes on and you understand something. It's rhema. That's the revelation knowledge of God's word. That's how the, the word can, can, can go forth. But, but it doesn't necessarily become rhema until God breathes on it. That's why two people can say the same thing. And you get nothing from one. That's right. But another person can get up there and say the same thing. And God breathes on it. Yeah. And that's why one person can say one word in one place and everybody else gets something specific and intimate from God for them. That's that right. is a miracle that happens in the presence of God on a regular basis. But sometimes we just miss it. So what's my point? The point is that despite all of my grammatical errors and my poor pronunciation people might hear from me from time to time. How is it that, that you can somehow still hear words coming straight from the heart of God? Come on. Amen. How many of you would like to see a glimpse of God's heart today? It, it's something about wanting God's heart 
what it is that motivates you. If it's his heart, it's something different about you. It's something different. You didn't just come for another church service to get a check on the attendance block. But you came because you wanted to go after the heart of God. That's, that's why I like people that want to be like David. Because the Bible said that, that David was a man after God's own heart. That's how God described it. He said, he said David, the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. Wouldn't it be awesome if God described you like that? Because there's all kind of people that got descriptions of you. That's right. <laughs> Say that. Say that. <laughs> but God's description of David is that, listen, David is a man that's after my heart. And David described his own pursuit of God like this. He said, listen here, show him Gary. He said, like a deer that panted after the waters. Like a deer that panted after the water broke, so panted my soul after thee. So, so, so when he described his pursuit of God, David wanted his heart to be like God's heart. That's so right. what puts you in a position to want your heart to be like God's heart? Yeah. You have to realize that there's something dirty in your heart. He, he realized that this evil in his heart uh, needed to be cleaned up. So he cried out. He said, Lord, create in me. Come on. Amen. Amen. We don't pray prayers like that no more. We want a bigger house, a bigger car, a bigger watermelon, a nicer job. You know, this is the kind of stuff we're praying for now. But, but David said, this is what I want. I want you to create in me a clean heart. Come on. The one that I have is dirty. The one that I have needs renovation. If there's things in there that shouldn't be there that need to be cleaned out. So create in me a clean heart. And then that spirit that I had needs to be renewed. Come on. All right. David was asking for a revival. <laughs> we don't we don't we don't we don't pray those prayers anymore. They, David David orchestrated something and no wonder God called him a man after his own heart. And you see church other people had descriptions of David too. Yeah, they did. <laughs> David was a very controversial king because he was he was he had some good things. He was a he was a war hero. He was a champion. David was the man, but he was also a murderer and an adulterer. Yep. Can I get a Bathsheba? Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> he had some serious strengths, but he also had some weaknesses. Yeah. Come on. And yet, with all of his strengths and all of his weaknesses, there was one thing that was consistent about his life. He always maintained a relentless pursuit of the heart of God. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. He never claimed to be perfect. How many of you can identify with David? Mm -hmm. Have you ever found yourself saying, Lord, listen, God, God I, I've made some mistakes along the way. I'm not proud of some of the things I've done. And even now, I'm struggling with some stuff that, 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 that I know isn't right. But, but even with all my faults and failures, I'm not going to stop coming after your heart. Yeah, that's right. That's right. We, 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 we need to be more like David. We have, we have people that, that are like that, that, that say, I'm not going to stop trying to get it right, no matter how many times I get it wrong. Amen. Because even when my own family gives up on me, I know you won't. Yes, Every time I fall, you manage to pick me up. Even when my brothers and sisters in the church let me down, you're a friend that sticks closer yes, than brother. Yes. Oh, amen. How many of you made up your mind that you're going to follow Jesus no matter what the devil throws at you? Amen. All in. No matter how many times you, you fail to get it right, no matter how uh, uh, what people think about you, no matter what uh, uh, people are saying about you behind your back, you sold out 
And ain't no devil in hell going to stop you from coming after the heart of God. Amen. Amen. So let me ask y'all something. Why is it that it seems like sometimes the more we pray, the worse things get? You see, some people think that, that the devil has a posture that when you choose to follow Jesus, uh, he's going to fall back and let you get your Jesus walk together. Come on now. <laughs> I love to, uh, 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 sharing this, uh, this, this law in the Bible out of Romans 7.21. But the Bible tells us in Romans 7.21 that there is a spiritual law. A law that every time you try to do good, <laughs> you ain't even actually got to do good. You just got to want to. You, if you ain't got no evil around you, I'm kind of scared of you. Because that means you don't even want to do right. I expect some evil around you. You ought to at least want to do good. That's right. Amen. That's a low bar. Every time I would do good, mm -hmm. evil is right there to try to stop me. I want to get my life right with God. I, I want to do better today than I did yesterday. It, you have just painted a target on your back. You have just sent a, a, an engraved golden invitation to the enemy mm -hmm. to attack you mm -hmm. because you want to do better. Welcome to the fight. Mm -hmm. You see, church, most of you uh, that are like me, because you, if you're like me, you see, I, I want to follow Jesus and do the right thing and all that, but... but like I said, I just, I just want to do it without having to break a sweat sometimes. You know what I mean? Amen. I mean, sometimes, it, God, God never seems to be on the same page with me here, but I, I mean, really take a look at how God actually leads the people that he loves. This is, this is the, the, the almighty creator, and, 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 and watch how he leads people that he does. He doesn't even try to hide it. He, he put it right here in the Bible. How he leads people. Exodus 13, um, God is delivering people, his people, the children of Israel, his chosen people from the bondage of Pharaoh. And, and, and he takes the time to point out the fact that I could have led them an easier way. And it came to pass when Pharaoh had let the people go that God led them not through the way of the land of the Philistine, although that way was near. God said, let's peradventure the people repent when war break out. Mm -hmm. And then they're going to turn back to Egypt. Mm -hmm. The thing that I delivered them uh -huh. from. Uh -huh. Come on. Woo. <laughs> so I decided that I was going to take them the hard way. Uh -huh. So to make sure that they're ready when stuff starts to pop off. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I want to make sure that, 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 that you don't just uh, have the ability to serve me when everything is lining up the way it's supposed to. Come on. But can you serve me and operate in a hostile environment? That's right. I was talking to two of my daughters just yesterday about that. About how, how sometimes, you know, it, it don't line up and you still got to serve God. Woo. Even, even when things ain't lining up and things are difficult and, 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 and people are frustrating you. My daughter know you. That's what y'all get for calling me while I'm getting my message together. You're going to wind up in the sun. Everybody just look straight ahead. But it's something about, about, about when, you, when you get that wake-up call and, and God says, the, 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 is the only way you can serve me is if the devil leaves you alone. Wow. What, what, what happens when you have to navigate the things that I've instructed you to do, but there's obstacles in your way? Come on. We talked about it in my this past Saturday. Uh, Larry and I and Karen, we were talking about the, the obstacles to salvation. The, 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 the enemy's going to make sure that you've got some obstacles there. So, 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 so. 
It, it, it actually pleases God. When, when you think about it, the Bible says without faith, it's impossible to please him, right? Mm -hmm. yes. How many of you want to please him? Yes, I mean, that, that, that's really our goal. We want him to look at us. Well done, my good and faithful yes, servant. Sir. I want God to be proud of us. Mm -hmm. We want him to be proud of us, but, but we also have to understand that, that there's a certain reaction. God has an odd reaction when you please him. Matthew 4, the first verse of Matthew 4, Jesus had just pleased his father so much that his father decided to tell everybody, that's my boy, I'm proud of him. Then what does he do next? The very next thing he does. Mm. It's right here. This, this is the verse right after. God said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. And then the dove, uh, the Holy Spirit descended as a dove onto the, the, the son of God. Mm -hmm. I'm so pleased. I'm going to put this, 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 this presence on you, this dove. I'm going to descend on you. Everybody, I want you to look at how proud I am. Now, this is how I'm going to respond. I'm going to lead him into the wilderness Mm -hmm. That's how you gonna carry me now? I just pleased you? And this is the response. Then, the then, when you think of then, then means this is what he did then, after that. Then. Can y'all see that I'm frustrated? I'm doing a good job and then, the very next thing he does, he doesn't throw him a party. That's what I would have did. Right, right. No, he, he leads him into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And then some of us, we wonder, wait a minute, why I'm trying to serve God and this is what I get, yeah? You think you're better than Jesus? This was Jesus we're talking about. <laughs> Hello? And guess what? Jesus ain't no better. He learned just like his daddy did. He do stuff exactly like him. Let's look at Mark 4. Now Jesus is leading people. In Mark 4, the 35th verse, the Bible says in the same day, when the evening was come, he saith unto them, let us pass over to the other side. This is Jesus telling his disciples, I'm leading you to the other side. Right? Y'all know the story. You Bible scholars up in here. So when they had sent away the multitude, they took him, even as he was in the ship, and there was also with him other little ships. All right, keep going. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat on the ship so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, sleep. <laughs> it's one thing to be sleep, but he was sleep on a pillow. So, you know, that, that's, <laughs> you know, sometimes people just kind of accidentally fall asleep. They sit in there and they just, you know. But if you got the nerve to go get a pillow, right? Come on. You don't decide that I'm going to go to sleep and I want to get comfortable in this sleep. This ain't like, oh, did I just fall asleep? I'm sorry. No, uh, uh. he was asleep. He was asleep. Uh oh, am I messing up something? He was asleep on a pillow. And they awoke him and said unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? The disciples following Jesus as he does, just like his daddy did, and he leads them into the middle of a storm, but then he goes to sleep on them. And here's where God tried to reveal something to us. The disciples were in a desperate situation. And I thought their choice of words they used when they woke Jesus up was interesting. They said, Master, carest thou not that we perish? They weren't mad about perishing. They were mad because Jesus didn't seem to care. You see, because 
What a lot of people um, uh, 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 don't realize, and this is one of the things that really blessed me about, about Sister Michelle's testimony uh, uh, with, about her friend, as you see, because when, when we're going through something bad, we want someone to care. Mm -hmm. that, that's why those words are going to touch us so much, because it's one thing to go through something, but it's, it's, it's completely different if you're going through something and people don't even seem to be conscious yes. of what you're dealing with. You see, the disciples asked Jesus, don't you care? When you're going through something, you don't want to be alone. When I take my last breath, I want my family around me to comfort me. I don't want to waste away in some cold and empty uh, a senior citizen's home with nobody around. I know I can't, I can't go through life without ever facing any heartache and pain. But God, please just don't make me go through it alone. Every now and then, I, I, I need right. a shoulder to lean yes. on myself. I, I bend the shoulder, but every time uh, I need a shoulder, I, I, I need to make sure that somebody is there uh, to say, even if you can't fix my problem, yes. brother, just let me know you're in my corner and you care. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on. Even if you can't understand what I'm dealing with, just 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 hug me and tell me that everything's gonna be all right and you got my back. But whatever you do, don't just go to sleep. Jesus. Come on now. Yes. <laughs> this is how the Come disciples. On. You know, we're going down, but don't go to sleep. Isn't it ironic Amen. when you think about this dilemma that the disciples were in? how we've got another scenario here in our text where the roles were reversed. And Jesus is going through a storm at Gethsemane and the disciples then messed around and went to sleep on him. <laughs> okay. I mean, you can't make this stuff up. It's right here in the Bible. Matthew 26, uh, going back to the 36th verse, I wanna read this again. I want everybody to see what's happening. Then Jesus coming uh, to the garden of Gethsemane and saith unto the disciples, sit ye here while I go yonder and pray. He took with him uh, uh, Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Then saith he unto them, My soul is seeing sorrowful even unto death. Tarry ye here. Tarry. Now go to sleep. Tarry. And watch. Don't go to sleep. Watch with me. And, and he went a little further, fell on his face and prayed, Oh, my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. And so he cometh unto his disciples and findeth them. Peter. Peter. <laughs> that was me, that was God. Peter. This this is this is this is how I woke him up. Well, could you not watch with me one hour? That's right. Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but your flesh. <laughs> Is weak. Can you just see Peter? Yeah, I got, I got you. I, I'm, I'm, yeah, I, I got you. Give me five minutes. <laughs> Pete looking for the skin of the button. <laughs> so he went away again the second time and prayed, saying, Oh, my father, if this cup may not pass from me, uh, uh, except I drink it, then thy will be done. And it came to pass, uh, uh, he, and he found them. He came back, and he found them asleep again. <laughs> wow. For their eyes were heavy. <coughs> and, he, and, and he left them and went away again and prayed the third time, saying the same words. He prayed the same prayer, same words. And then he cometh to his disciples and saith unto them, Sleep on them. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> wow. Come on. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> After the third time, he he, he, just, he, he realized something. He, he had a breakthrough. He was looking for some support. Come and on. it wasn't that the people didn't want to support him, but their eyes were dead. <laughs> Any other guy some sleepy soldiers around him? They're soldiers, they just sleep. Well. So, you, you got this dilemma here that we're looking at. Where 
Here we, we, we can see the humanity of Jesus because it's human nature to, 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 to want comfort and support and to find the path of least resistance. If I got to get some resistance, let's try to make it as easy as possible. I mean, nobody in their right mind wants to suffer what Jesus is about to suffer. So in the text, uh, the human part of Jesus is asking the Father if there's any other way for me to save the world. Lord, I'm willing to do your work, but, but do I have to do it that way? Come on. <laughs> that was his prayer. And we already know the answer is the title he gave us in this message. There ain't no other way. <laughs> ain't no other way. He, he didn't check. At the same time, the divine part of Jesus is saying, is, is, there, is there no other way? If there isn't, then so be it. His body is crying out for survival, but his spirit is saying, if I perish, just let me perish in your will. Yes. You see, Jesus knew he, he had to die before he ever came here, but, but he didn't want to go through it alone. He wanted his disciples to back him up and support him. You see, it's one thing to be beaten and spit on and crucified, but, but when his very own disciples went to sleep on him and his very own father had to turn his back on him when he became sin for us, oh, it don't get more alone than that. Right, right. Jesus had to cry out, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Mm -hmm. Talk about some last sayings, though. <laughs> I have to get in there with y'all next year. <laughs> I want to nail something in the, in the cross. <laughs> Jesus had the same attitude the disciples had when they were about to perish on the boat. They had already resolved that they were about to perish. They just wanted to know if he cared. Mm -hmm. You see, the difference in the Garden of Gethsemane is that there was, there was a defining moment where Jesus' attitude changed because he began to understand this is a storm that I have to go through on my own. Come on. Yeah. Amen. There's just, there's just no other way. Mm -hmm. and, and once we get to the point where, where we understand that there are some storms that you've got to go through all by yourself. I can hurt with you, but I can't hurt for you. Uh -huh. you, see, you see, God is calling his church to rise up to the place to where you understand that when he's coming back for a bride, he, he can't marry a baby. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. he, he can only baby you for so long That's before right. he pushes you out of the nest. Uh -huh. He, he, can only, he can only cater to you so long before, before he pushes you out of your comfort zone. Mm -hmm. That's right. Before he forces you to stand on your own two feet. Call the pastor, he might not answer. Listen, y'all know it ain't beneath me. <laughs> he, 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 he takes us through the wilderness. Why? Let's peradventure the people repent when they see war and turn back to Come Egypt. On. Turn back to the mess and the filth that I delivered you from. Your brothers and sisters in the church might stop returning your calls. Your own family doesn't seem to be sensitive to what you're going through. Here's how you know when you're maturing in your relationship with God. When all of a sudden you can walk right up to the people that you normally expect to be in your corner, look them right in the eye and say, sleep on that. Go ahead. Go ahead. I, I don't want to go through this all by myself, but there, there just ain't no other way. Mm -hmm. I, I'd like to make you understand what I'm dealing with, but there just ain't no other way. Sleep on now because I know your spirit is willing, but I can see that your flesh is weak and there just ain't no other way. Come on. Sometimes our spirits are crying out to God himself to help me with this thorn in my flesh. And then even God looks at you and says, my grace is sufficient for me. You know, he, Paul prayed three times for that thorn in his flesh. God heard him the first and second time. It ain't like God is deaf. <laughs> you ever wonder why he waited till the third time, man? <laughs> 
I ask God these types of questions. When you think about him finally responding, the first couple of times you wanted to say, <laughs> you were going to figure it out. Sometimes no response is a response. <laughs> Sometimes the silence says it all. I'm asking God to deliver me from this situation. And he said, this time, instead of delivering you from it, I'm going to deliver you through it. Come on. There's mm -hmm. just no Amen. other way for you to grow. It's like wanting muscles but not wanting to work out. Y'all just look straight ahead. <laughs> Ain't no other way. You want biceps and pectorals and quads and all that kind of stuff. Won't even look at the gym. <laughs> Your muscles grow to meet the demands that you place on. When, when, when you work out, uh, they, they, they tell you that there's a certain plateau. If you continue to just lift the same weight, then your, your, your body says, okay, I got to maintain this. But then you mess around and let somebody start putting more weight on there. Right, big fellas? I'm looking at that row, the big fella row. <laughs> you start putting more weight, and then your muscles have internal communication mechanisms. They say, hey, y'all, we got to grow. Because he is placing a, a greater demand on us than he used to. Uh -huh. Your faith is just like that. Your anointing is just like that. You place a demand on the anointing and your anointing has got to. Your faith has got to grow. That's right. I learned a lot about growing because I can't grow other ways. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 5'4". With these shoes on, I'm like 5'6". Oh. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> but we, we have to understand that, that there are certain things that God puts us, situations that he puts us in, that the best thing that he can do for you is nothing. I'm going to leave y'all with this scene from a movie that uh, I like talking about this. Uh, Nadia, you're too young for this one. But there was a Ray Charles movie that came out probably before Nadia was born. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was a scene in this Ray Charles movie that came out a while ago and, and it, it, it showed <laughs> where Ray Charles, when he lost his sight as a little boy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So in this scene, it showed when when Ray Charles first began to go blind, and his mother told him that that he uh, that, that that she'd help him a little bit, but the world wasn't gonna be kind right. to you just because you're blind. Right. The devil ain't gonna back up off you just because he you, you got a weakness. As a matter of fact, if the devil have his way, he's gonna try to exploit that weakness. That's right. So 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 she said, I'll help you a, a little bit at first, but but after the, after that, son, you on your own. Because I know I can't always be there for you. And, and if, if, if I baby you, then you'll never survive in this oh, cruel no. and evil world. So, 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 so she, she backed up off of him. Mm -hmm. It wasn't that she loved him. She didn't back up off of him because she didn't love him. She backed up because she did love him. That's right. right. And so shortly after that, there was this scene where, where, where he was running inside from playing and he fell and he hurt himself and, and, and he was crying out for his mother, Mama, Mama, uh, help, I can't see, I done fell. And, and, and she was standing right there. She stood there with tears in her eyes watching her own son struggle, Come but on. she never moved. Yeah. 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 It's powerful. <laughs> and even though she, she, she never made a sound, he knew she was there. Yeah. There are situations you're in where even though God never makes a sound. You know he's there. And so finally, 
he navigates his way up and he works his way out of that situation despite his weaknesses. God showed me a glimpse of his heart and how sometimes that, that his love for us forces him to do nothing wow. in your situation because there ain't no other way for you to get to where you need to be from where you are right now. Thank you, Give God some praise. So we're going to um, take a few questions. For those of you who are visiting with us, it's important uh, that we walk out of here having had a crystal clear understanding of what God was trying to communicate to us. So um, I'd like to take uh, five questions. Um, and, and, and there may be something that was said in the message that you'd like for me to clarify. Um, I, I talk about the three levels of learning a lot. Uh, and I'm going to say it again in this setting. There's the knowledge level, the comprehension level, and the application level. Mm -hmm. Knowledge level is when you uh, know the scriptures, you can quote them. And a lot of people in the church quote scriptures, right? Um, um, but, but the comprehension level is when you know what you're talking about. Not only do you know the scriptures, but you understand them and you can explain them. Right? But the application level is when you can apply what you know now. in a real world situation. Amen. And that's why I like to do the question and answer session because it's important to me that you can say, Pastor, I know what you said. I know the scripture. I've seen it. Gary put it up on the screen. I understand it because you explained it. Now help me apply it to what I'm dealing with right now. The application level understanding is where God is trying to get us to. So we're going to open up. Uh, uh, we'll take five questions. We'll start with uh, 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 first, if there's any guests, uh, and if not, then we'll, we'll go to everybody. All right? Oh, yeah. Bless your preacher. I really don't have a question, um, but a lot of you know that I have been grieving the death of my father. About three months. It's still hard. And um, one thing my dad, um, some things you missed, and I didn't, my dad was, you know, uh, a lot. But um, one thing I missed is like the little things. And on the 2nd of April, me and Tony um, celebrated our anniversary, our 19th year of marriage. Woo. And, uh, My dad, I missed a, missed a phone call mm. that my dad would have just called and he would call me like two or three days earlier because he'd be like, he forgot the date and he just, you know, just wanted to wish us a happy anniversary. And I didn't receive the phone call this year. Mm. And so when I saw him safe in his arms, it touched me. But the one thing that my dad always told me from the moment that he met my husband was that was a good man, that's a good man. All right. <clears throat> So a lot of people, a lot of people on the second, um, if they follow my husband, they know I get a little shout out on April the second about our anniversary. Mm -hmm. And people, I don't never share anything because I'm just that not that I'm not that type of person to have social media and share a lot about my family. But on the second, my husband don't post anything else. He will post something about me and our anniversary. And this time, I'd like to just say something about him. Okay. Because I have been going through some things. Not only have I had the death of my father, I also have had death of some of my friends. Mm -hmm. And some Tony don't know what he gonna get one day to the next. <laughs> he don't know if he gonna get me coming home crying, or I'm coming home laughing, or mad, or something or a battle verse or something. But as I told him, he still stuck with me. Amen. 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 He stuck with me. And with that 19th year, we have gone through some things. Children getting older, leaving the house, that was another whole debacle. <laughs> um, the death of both of our fathers, 
and he just still keep coming home. He still yeah. just praise God. God. Hugging me, he still mm. tells me I'm the most beautiful, but I don't have a little makeup and hair. Come on. Yeah. So, recognize my husband because Amen. I don't have any type of Facebook and just know that he is the best thing besides God that ever happened to me. Woo! 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 try to uh, tell to anybody that will listen to me is when we're going through stuff, right? There's a difference between a bad situation and a hard situation. Bad situations can get better. That's right. Hopeless situations, when all hope is lost and you just accept that this is the way it is. Mm -hmm. So when you're in a bad situation, that's the first thing you got to ask yourself. Is this hopeless? Mm -hmm. yeah. Is this hope? Who is our hope? Our hope is built on nothing less but Jesus Christ and his righteousness. He is our hope. So our situation, as bad as it may get, it is never hopeless. So thank you for that question because I think that that's where the enemy wants us to, to get. In seasons like this, I think that, you know, what a lot of people don't understand is that it's not just uh, terrible diseases that are taking people out of here. Suicide is on the rampant. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you think that anybody that ever committed suicide still had hope? You don't get to that place if you still have hope. So the enemy's desire is to rob you of your hope. Because as long as you got it, then giving up is not an option. And, the, and, and if we know that Jesus is our hope, mm -hmm. then the only thing that he can do is try to separate you from Jesus. Yeah. I think I made Buddha mad last week. Yeah. <laughs> I had uh, um, uh, a Buddhist uh, come up to me after uh, uh, last week's sermon and, and want me to uh, know that she was offended. <laughs> because Jesus and Buddha are the same person. Wow. That's what she said to me. She said that to me with a straight face. Oh. My Lord. Wow. But she 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 walked up to me feeling offended, but she left feeling loved. Amen. Amen. Because it's, there's, there's something that we need to understand, and we talked about this a little bit at MIT um, this past Saturday, is that, you know, there's, the, the, the one thing that we have to understand is that God, God uses obstacles to salvation, and all things work together for the good. Had I not offended uh, a Buddha, I might not have had that, the opportunity to have that conversation. Yes. And, and uh, when she came, she was... Uh, 
very nervous that I'd have something to drag her somewhere and throw holy water all over her. <laughs> I mean, that, that's a summarized quote from what she said. I don't know how you're going to take this. You're going to have people try to throw holy water on me and that kind of, she was, you know, she was a little, you know, concerned about that. Um, but she wanted me to understand that she was offended by that. And I said, listen, I, I'm disappointed that you are offended by what I believe. Because I'm not offended by what you believe. That's right. Right? That's right. I understand that you believe that Jesus and Buddha are the same person. Mm. I get it. And that is completely opposite of what I believe. And both of us can't be right. <laughs> One of us are wrong. Right? But this is what I'm asking you to do. If you, if you could just get past your offense for what I believe, and allow me to love you where I am and where you are. Mm -hmm. Allow me to just reach out and hug you. Can I hug you and just let you know that I love you? Because even if you don't want Jesus, will you just accept my love? And she accepted that embrace, not understanding <laughs> that she was accepting God's embrace. Because even people that don't want God, they'll tell you they want love. Uh -huh. And God is love. And God has a son in Jesus Christ. I don't even know how I got all over there. Uh, what's the next question? <laughs> we got one behind you, Gene. Oh, we got two in front of you and one behind you. Uh, that, that wheel behind you. Yeah, um, once again, Pastor Don, um, excellent um, lesson. Um, that's why I always um, like coming to you um, when you preach, but uh, no offense against James and the other preachers. <laughs> They're good too. They don't love you. <laughs> They're good too. No, seriously. Um, I, um, by the grace of God, I got six months and ten days today. You know, um, you know who ain't, you know who ain't happy about this. You know, you know who ain't happy. Yeah. But I, ain't, I don't care if he ain't happy. You know, um, but uh, you know, it just makes me wonder. You know, um, every day I, I'm thinking, you know, God, um, I'm ready to I'm ready to serve you to the best capacity. And so, you know, I'm listening to worship songs and I cheer up on some of the songs because the, the spirit's coming upon me. That's good. And everything and. Uh, then I then I say you know um, and then then I'm in, then I go to um, then I'm then they're having me chair meetings you know and uh, online meetings out in Santa Cruz there's a group out in Santa Cruz that I um, I go to every day at about three o'clock and um, and so I'm chairing and and um, yesterday we have the, what these bombers come on right these bombers and they come on and um, what they do is they show naked pictures of themselves on the on the and they try to disrupt the meetings. Okay, and so what our job is, is we have, we have a strain keeper called a strain keeper. What that person's job is, is to get that person off the, off the screen. So yesterday, oh, oh my God, he comes. There he comes this one. He's all, he's had this code name, big, big, uh, big whatever, right? And uh, and so he's on there doing this thing, and, and I'm freaking out. I'm like, oh, what? Uh, I got it, I got it. And so I figured, I saw his name, and I got him off the screen, but... Y'all get damaged, you know, but um, I was I was already messed up. The whole messed up. The rest of the meeting messed up, you know. And I'm I'm getting oh, oh my God, you know. But I gotta understand, you know, that that stuff's gonna happen, you know. That's just like the enemy just throwing dirt in your um mix, you know, trying to mess you all up. But um, I'm 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 you know convinced that the harder I serve God, the the harder the enemy's gonna come after me. And and um. And I, and I know that um, I'm just going to keep serving God no matter what. Amen. 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 I love this church. I just do. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
appreciate that because this weekend has been a trying weekend for me. My neighbors had it going on. <laughs> they argued from 8 o'clock at night to 12 o'clock at night, howling and screaming at each other and cussing and clowning. And that's the kind of mess I'm trying to get away from. Wow. And it's all around me. And I love my apartment. I want to move. But then I say, I'd be away from my church. Karen's car is not running. And I don't know how I get back and forth to church. So. I just ask God to help me, and I want to move. And I say, Lord, just help me to be able to deal with this situation since I'm not able to move. Mm-hmm. Help me to be able to tell me, as long as they don't come in my door or do anything to me. But it just get on my nerves. I'm old and it bothers me. Everybody <laughs> wants their kids basketball. <laughs> and they stand by my bedroom when they boss basketball all day and all night. <laughs> <laughs> when that drives me crazy. Lord, please help me. Lord, it's hard. I tried to. That would just attack me in every way. And it went from the kids to the grown-ups, and I don't know what. Then one of the neighbors came outside. He said, "You go in your house, and you go in your house." And the girl came from across from 202 to 203, up there to argue. Now, that's how people lose their lives. I said, "Now you coming to somebody else's house to argue, cuss and clown and give me call it prejudice and all this." Stay at your house, mind your business. You know, I said, Lord, please help me. But I remember a time in my life that that was exciting to me. <laughs> <laughs> but since I found the Lord, it just annoys me. <laughs> <laughs> I four hours with him to stop. Please, Lord, let him go in the house. And when the man told him that, they told me, you don't even live here. Why don't you go where you live and mind your business? I was saying to myself, Lord, he tells them, right, everybody go in their own house and it's over. Yeah. Amen. So Amen. God just bless me and ask God to keep me down. I'm be able to stay in that place until he decides for me to go. Amen. I don't know if it's God's will that I stay there. That maybe that's part of my job and my job is not yeah. done. And I can share the goodness of the Lord Amen. in the land of the living. Amen. 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 Praise Amen. God. Amen. In the meantime, we're going to get to some holy gift months. <laughs> I thank the Lord you, you did that thing yes, You said yes. something In the server In the message I might go back on the video Cause you know when you get my age Our age We don't remember everything Say what? Yeah you don't remember Who is that don't remember I thought it was young people <laughs> But um that was an excellent message, and I thank God for the, you know, because, you know, I had just said before you got to preach God, I got to really get this thing together. You know, I was talking about some spiritual things, and just the way I'm being led now, as opposed to how God led me then. And I was, I was, I was listening to your message about how we grow, and about spiritual growth. And you know how physical growth and spiritual growth, and, and it all kind of mimics one another because God has order. He has order. He's a God of decency and of order. But the thing about it is, we got to have the Holy Ghost to do it. We got to have the Holy Ghost to, in, to, in, to initiate our minds to understand. Like uh, 2023, most of 2023, I was bedridden. Couldn't even hardly make it to the bathroom. And I'm just coming out of it and, and, and but my question to God, and you know, just like Jesus prayed. I was praying, God, you ain't gotta do all this to me. Just tell me what to do. <laughs> but it isn't like that because after you go in and you realize, well, God, I done prayed all I could pray, no matter what happened. God, I still love you. And I still worship you. And I still adore you because there is no one. You know when uh, Jesus said you must eat of my flesh and drink of my blood. And all of his disciples, it was more than 12, left him. And he asked them, are you going to go too? And they said, where will we go? Amen. Okay, once again, hello, family. I just want to say, um, I know just about everybody here, 
And like I said earlier, it's a blessing to be back. I just want to know because I go through a lot. Like um, the pastor said, everybody's not going to like you. Nope. And I'm just saying that straight up to every one of you. Not that I don't think no one likes me, doesn't like me here. But I want y'all to know that I'm back here to praise God. Amen. 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 And I'm back here for a reason. Yeah. Yeah. Because I was here before some of y'all, and I left and left some of y'all here. But the bottom line is that God has sent me back. And all I want to do is praise God. That's it. And I want you to help me to get past those haters. Yeah. And I'm not saying that they're here. Because haters are everywhere. Yes. And I just want to praise God. Yeah. And I've got this persona about me that it doesn't matter. Come on now. That I got it all together. Yes. But God knows what's going on with me. Amen. And if some of y'all have taken, or I've come to you to let you know, you know what's going on with me. Mm -hmm. Everything that looked good ain't good. Yes. And I'm not saying I'm rotten. I said I'm going through some things. Amen. That's right. Amen. So I just want to let y'all know here, here at Empower Believers that I'm back and I'm being fed. And God knows when to send somebody back to where they need yeah, to be. Yeah. Right. So I want y'all to rest assured. I'm going to sound like my daddy now if y'all remember him. <laughs> I'm not here to do anything but praise God. Amen. Amen. And for y'all to pray for me. Amen. Amen. Let's give God some praise for Pastor Monago while he comes. I wouldn't come up this way, but there ain't no other way. Y'all catch that after a while. That's right. All right, all right. Come on, leaders, y'all know what to do with our pastor. All right, by way of announcements, um, let's, first of all, let's remember the present ministry and prayer tonight. Amen. 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 And the crew going out there to serve God. Amen. All right. In the midst of it all. Amen. After Young, we want to thank you once again for allowing God to use you in such an awesome manner that we can hear the voice of the Lord. Amen. Yes. You all good? Amen. Let's rise to our feet. Those who can, let's rise to our feet. Those who cannot, you sit right where you are. Amen. We love you and God loves you right there. Amen. Let's get ready to go get something greasy. Let's get ready to go and have some fun. Amen. Because the word of God has been preached. The word of God is sown in our hearts. And now it's time for us to activate that word and to use it wherever we go all throughout the week. Amen. Amen. Remember the prayer line and to pray for those uh, who are sick and the shut in. Remember that everybody in here is going through something. Everybody's going through something. So you're not alone. Pray for others as they pray for you. Amen? Amen. 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 Let's pray. Father God, we want to thank you once again for using your servant, Pastor John Young, Lord God, to bring forth a message. There is no other way. Lord, we thank you because when we look unto Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith, there's many times you let us know that. There is no other way, but just keep your eyes on me. Keep your eyes on the Lord. Keep your eyes on the prize. For he is the God of all hope. He is the God of all comfort. He's the God of all joy, the God of all peace, the God of all love, the God of all grace, and the God of all mercy. For Lord, let us keep our minds focused on you. That may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest ruling the Bible on each and every one of us from this day and forevermore. And all who agree said, Amen. 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 God bless you all. Amen.